Shalom. Shalom, Wonder Moach, greetings, brothers and sisters, and also others that might get the opportunity to check out this video. This is going to just be a brief video. Some already know this particular subject matter, but um, shockingly or surprisingly, many are not picking up on this particular point here that the so-called Illuminati eye, the eye, this eye that's their symbol, that's their resemblance, that's their sign, their sigil in all the earth, that the scriptures, the Bible, the prophets, the prophet Zechariah, Zechariah, he already foresaw that through the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. And what's so very interesting is that with all that's being um, disseminated and there's some disinfo that's being put out there, of course, but in the, in the scriptural biblical knowledge of this evil eye, this evil eye, that's what it's called in, um, ancient uh, Tobia, or ancient Ethiopia, this is known as the evil eye, or what they call the Buddha eye, the Buddha eye. But this eye that's known as the Illuminati eye, some say Freemasonry, actually the link really is to ancient uh, Satanism, right? Or yeah, Satanawi, the Satna El, and the fallen you know, the fallen archons, the devil, the angels, the fallen angels, that whole, that whole conspiracy against his majesty, that whole conspiracy against God and Christ. Mm. Many have been led to believe that this, uh, this eye or the eye that's on the dollar bill, many have been led to believe that it's the eye of Horus, but that's part of their deception right there. That's part of their you have to recognize that um, that the evil doers, right? The evil doers, they really don't have any real power. If you really would overstand it, their power is the power of suggestion. You can even see that in the Ganetta Aden in the story within the first book of the Hebrew Bible, of the Bible called Bereshit or Genesis, is that the, the reptilian, the serpent. Right, the seed of the serpent. The power is suggestion. And because of humanity's fall from the Christ mind, the God mind, the original, the original state in which they were created in the image and after the likeness, they have fallen to that reptilian cortex. That reptilian cortex. So that's where the the the, the seed of the serpent, that's where the reptilians, that's what they target, that lower that lower state, right? That fallen state. That's what it really means in the scripture when it says the fall of man. But this I right here, this I has already been for foreseen and foreshadowed and pointed out in this scripture right here in Zechariah chapter five, verse six. And we put out a vid, a couple of vids actually on this. Perhaps we were not as clear as we should have should have been and hopefully this will be a little more clearer so that those who sincerely those who sincerely are fighting the good fight of faith of the true faith will be spiritually armed and and this is what we're going to bring in the scripture once again right so of course we have the pharaoh Right, the one who did not know Joseph, did not know Joseph, and the Joseph. This is this is who Joseph is in the prophecy. This is Joseph right here, Burhan Salasi, right, and this is that king, right, that king that did not know that president that did not know Joseph, and you can check out the interview where he's asked about Bar Marley. You can clearly see that he does not know Joseph. He does not know Joseph. All right, so basically he's connected with this right here because we're in that end times, these latter days coming down to the last days. This is why this particular symbol here is so much speculated on. But many of those, especially in the church and the Bible who refer to the Bible, they've missed over this because they're lost in translation or they're lost in mistranslation. In the King James translation, it says, this is their, right? They live. This is their resemblance. So when you look in 
Zechariah, Old Testament, prophet, Hebrew prophet, Zechariah, chapter 5, verse 6, you'll find the verse that would say, this is their resemblance through all the earth. Now, this same I in the triangle, which really has nothing to do with Egypt, but they know that they have dumbed down and poisoned the minds, the hearts and the minds and diluted through their uh, mass media, through the prints of the ear, the airwaves, you know, people's consciences and people, you know, they're looking at the movies and stuff like that. And if they say you want to hide something, you basically hide it in the book. Right. And through the miseducation system and through the poisoning in the in the food, in the water, in the air, even in the what you wear, even what you wear, what we wear is being poisoned. Right. OK, let's just go on right here. We've got a couple of minutes left right here. And I want to just touch on this again, because um, it's surprising that none have really touched on this connection right here. That the scripture already showed this and not only showing this to be both prophetic and actually manifesting in this day and time, this latter day and time. Yahweh says, Jah, Jah says in the latter days, we would perfectly, completely, fully understand or overstand these things. But before you can get an overstanding, as one of my Wyndham, my brother said, you got to have an understanding before you can build something over you got to have something under. A lot of ones want to get a overstanding, but they don't have anything under. There's no foundation. Their foundation is a foundation of sand. So one's seeking to expose the Illuminati eye, the eye on the dollar, and all this other speculation. Though there's some good information there, there's a whole lot of disinformation because the foundation, right? Because there's no foundation. This is the foundation of exposing and revealing right, this particular resemblance, right, which in the Hebrew, when you look into the Hebrew, the word is I, which is oin, right, which is oin, right, or oin, right, here we go right here, here's the scripture, where it says, um, and I said, right, and I said, what is it, and he said, this is an ephah, now, an ephah, right, or an ephah is a measure for grain, a measure in general, a certain measure. And they say right here is of Egyptian derivation, right? So that's the Egypt connection that goeth, right, that goeth forth. He said, moreover, this is their resemblance. But let's click right here. And we see down here, this is their Oin, this is their I. Here we go, right here. This is their I. And now the I can be literal or figurative. By analogy, it's a fountain. Now notice what it says in the brackets in the parentheses. It says, as the land as the eye of the landscape. As the eye of the landscape. Isn't this what we see right here as the eye of the landscape, right? At the eye, as the eye of the landscape. Now, when you break this word down, you'll find it is a primitive word, ayin or ayin, right? And you can see all the different ways that it's translated, right? It's um, translated within the Bible. Now, if you look through all of them, it's way down here that you have resemblance. It's way down here that you have resemblance. Wouldn't it have been better, right, if it was translated directly? This is for those King James only folks. King James version has a lot of positive good there, but you can't stop there. You have to get a understanding before you can come to that overstanding before you can come to that overcoming. And I hope and I pray that this will be helpful in your fighting the good fight of faith. That's what that symbol really means from God Almighty's perspective, from his 
point of view. And he has a good overstanding. And with him, Jah Rastafari is the overcoming. No Joseph. I know Joseph. Know who Joseph really is. Shalom Rastafari.